Well, I'm very excited to be here. We have a room full of people, and uh, to be honest with you, it's one of the last presentations of the day, so we didn't expect a lot of people. So this is a great surprise for both of us. Um, oh, let me first tell you the story behind this picture. So when I was much younger than most of you, I uh, drew that picture that you see with my crayons, and uh, my mom somehow, amongst very, very few things she brought um, to the States with her was that one drawing that I did. And the other one is a picture of the launch um, and uh, my launch to International Space Station. And I like to put this up first because, you know, it's sort of a backup career for me uh, to tell people I can foretell the future. So if you want to know your future afterwards, you can just stop by and I'll be happy to do that. But I was uh, born a long, long time ago in a country far, far away, a place called Iran. Uh, you probably heard Iran on the news a lot, not usually with a lot of good news, but uh, what I remember of Iran is a really beautiful country with uh, beautiful night skies. The pollution was uh, much better back then, no pollution actually, uh, or very little pollution I should say. And the night skies looked so beautiful that I fell in love with the stars. And uh, I would go out there summer nights, sleep outside, and I would just let my mind sort of wander off and imagine myself floating amongst the stars and asking all these questions about what, what are those shiny objects? You know, why are they there? Is there uh, uh, another girl out there someplace, you know, looking back at me and asking the same questions? And, you know, all sorts of things, whether they're aliens, I prayed for the aliens to come and take me away, nobody showed up. But it sort of made me really fall in love with uh, math and science as well. And uh, this uh, desire or curiosity uh, sort of was the initial stages of my interest in, in STEM. It was all because of uh, I was just letting my imagination take me to different places. And imagination is a very unique gift we have as human beings. It's a gift that allows us to you know, imagine ourselves in places we've never been or maybe even doesn't exist anywhere or we don't know if it exists. Um, to invent things, to imagine things that do not exist. So it's a unique gift we have. And it, you know, imagination is something that may, it's like a spark of an idea in our head that may start because we just saw something someplace and sparked an idea, or maybe we watched something uh, on TV. I grew up watching Star Trek, or a wonderful book that you read, and it sort of gives you ideas. And then you, soon enough, you start seeing yourself, those positions, and before you know it, there you are, it, it comes true. It just starts all in your head. And um, you know, sometimes you go to great lengths to do that. Of course, growing up, I wanted to be an astronaut. I was in Iran, very young, and most people just you know, laughed it off and you know, never thought that it could come true. Probably got a lot of discouraging remarks from my peers and my schoolmates. But um, it didn't bother me. I just somehow knew I'm gonna do it, and you know, when I grow up, I'm gonna prove them wrong, uh, which I did. And uh, it's a great feeling to actually be able to stand here and say that. This was one of my ways, because when I came here, um, you know, um, I didn't have the opportunity to go and become an astronaut, but mm, you know, I, we were starting life over, like most immigrants who come to this country, didn't have any money. I, I was in 11th grade and I had to finish high school and uh, my mom asked me to make sure that whatever I do, choose something that I can find a job very quickly. And uh, you know, in Iran there are only few careers that are acceptable by parents. Uh, it's to become an engineer, a doctor, or a lawyer. So uh, I couldn't stand the sight of blood. I cannot memorize anything to save my life so I couldn't become a lawyer, so engineering was it. And I loved it because it involved math and science. So I became an engineer and it was a great choice for me. It, I built a wonderful career around my electrical engineering degree. Uh, first worked as an engineer and then started companies. So I became an entrepreneur and started building things. And that's what um, I want to make sure that you guys, if you want to take one thing away, sometimes maybe life will throw you a curveball and you cannot do what you want to do right off the bat, right after you graduate, for example. Or maybe you don't get accepted to the field you want in, 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 in uh, college. But it doesn't mean that you should give up completely on it. You should just, you know, sort of maybe 
keep it alive, keep it on hold, but don't forget about it so you can always go back to it. So there are a lot of people who use their imagination and then they dream, and those are the people who actually change our lives. And you can see uh, Steve Jobs and Wozniak, two people who proved everyone wrong back then in, uh, when computers were still the size of you know, this stage and uh, no one could even imagine that we will have more powerful computers in the little cell phones that you have in the palm of your hand. But there were people who dreamed of a day like today, even though they um, didn't know if it will happen for sure. And they made it happen. We wanted, I wanted to do something about, you know, ability of people going to space. And instead of just nagging that, you know, why can't we just buy a ticket and go to space and just wait for someone else to do something about it, I decided to do something about it. And that's what I did with in getting involved with the Ansari X Prize. We put up a prize because we saw that it had worked in the past and we wanted this prize to invigorate people to build um, you know, spaceships privately to make it available to private citizens like us to be able to experience space. And we had 26 teams from 11 countries that competed. Um, the prize was won in 2004. It was a $10 million prize and um, uh, Scale Composite, a company led by a brilliant aerospace engineer, Bert Rutan, won the prize. The design was called Spaceship One, as in the uh, Air and Space Museum, if you go there next to Spirit of St. Louis, which the X Prize was modeled after. And if you go there, you can look at it, and I'm proud to say that I played a small role in making that happen. But it's exciting to be alive now, because a lot is happening, and the rate of change is exponential, so things are happening at much um, faster pace. And especially in space, because now there are opportunities for us to not only explore space, but learn how we can, by gaining access to space, explore the resources in space to make our lives better here on Earth. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because these also all of these will present career opportunities for you, because you can look at it and say, you know, not only I can become an astronaut through NASA or you know, ESA or any of these um, government space agencies, but there are also all these other companies and businesses that are now built around space. So for example, you know, if we can build a solar space satellite, capture the energy of the sun and beam it down to a distribution plant on Earth, and be able to have a very good, sustainable source of energy for us, or um, you know, harvest the helium-3 um, on, on the moon. Um, you know, by lowering the cost of access to space and giving access to more people, I'm sure there will be a lot of different uses, not only for just entertainment and fun, but other uses for experimentation, and the building things in space. Just like, you know, when, you know, Apple came up with iPhone and the App Store, all of a sudden you have all these people who found a new way to create things for us, new uh, tools, new entertainment opportunities. Same thing will happen to space when we provide access to it, to everyone. Um, one of my favorite things that I hope happens soon is a, a space plane. I travel extensively. I would love to be able to say, oh, I have a meeting, I have to be in Sydney, Australia for lunch and I'll be back this afternoon. If that happens, that would make my day. But uh, as Kathleen mentioned, there are lots of other companies also uh, outside of NASA and the traditional space companies building spaceships, building uh, devices and technologies for space exploration. And that opens up a lot of job opportunities for many of you. And these are companies led by many entrepreneurs that you know from other um, you know, endeavors that they had. We have SpaceX that was started by Elon Musk. Elon is also the founder of PayPal and also the founder of Tesla uh, Motors, the electric car. He's an amazing, amazing individual and a great place to work at. Uh, Blue Origin uh, was founded by Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. They're also building 
uh, both orbital and suborbital uh, capabilities and uh, XCOR is building a suborbital uh, plane that will allow one individual and a pilot to experience uh, suborbits. And Sierra Nevada, Catherine talked about. But there's opportunities for us to create new medicine, um, uh, manufacture new things in microgravity, all because you know we are opening up access to more people to be able to do different things in space. And some of these may sound like, you know, um, science fiction, but they're not. Um, there are things happening now. So these are not things that I'm talking about that are far, far in the future. These are things that are happening now. And as you enter the job market, it will uh, open up new opportunities for you. Uh, last year, a company, the first uh, asteroid mine, mining company, commercial asteroid mining company was announced. And not only uh, they announced they have great backers, but they also already doing great research. And they did their first project was a Kickstarter project. Um, how many of you know about Kickstarter? Good. So again, Kickstarter, crowdsourcing, all these things never existed before. And it's now here, which gives individuals amazing entrepreneurs with ideas, amazing opportunities, tools, and resources to create things. So they launched their first Kickstarter to launch a, a telescope um, to orbit. And um, they were very successful, raised the money they needed, and they're building it now. So imagine if uh, NASA wanted to do the same project, how much uh, you know, work it had to go to just getting the budget approved through the Congress. So there are other opportunities that are opening up to uh, accomplish a lot of amazing things. One of the other technologies I'm very excited about, and I hope you are too, is 3D printing. And 3D printing um, has many uses. I'll show you some future uses. But specifically, they're going to carry the first 3D printer to the International Space Station. What does that mean? It means that you don't have to carry everything up there anymore. You can print the parts if something breaks, if you need to repair something, you know, if you forgot to take something, if you need a new tool to repair something, all you need to do is a file that has the description of what you need to do. It's a software file, they can send it up there and the printer can print it for you. Imagine going to Mars, to Moon, to other places, instead of carrying everything and then remembering, oh, I forgot something. You can print it up there. And again, if there are Trekkies in the room, any Trekkies in the room? Replicator. So let me share this video with you. In the future, there are going to be 3D printers that will allow you to actually create three-dimensional structures out of living cells. And they can build very complex structures like blood vessels or skin tissue. And the idea there is that in 10 or 20 years, these scientists are going to be able to 3D print tissue that can replace damaged vessels of a heart. Or they're going to be able to print replacement organs. So you won't have to go to find an organ donor anymore. You'll just be able to have one 3D printed at the hospital based on your own cell and your own genetic makeup. Right now at MIT, scientists are working on 3D printers that would actually allow you to print food. And who wouldn't want that in their house, right? If you could just ask Siri to cook you a steak. I mean, it's really going to be an exciting time in the home. In Japan, there's a company that's taking sonogram data. So they scan a pregnant woman's belly, and they're able to actually 3D print a figure of her torso. So instead of just having a fuzzy little black and white picture, you're getting a real model of what your child is going to look like. People are using 3D printers to do all sorts of interesting things in terms of the environment. Researchers are using 3D printers that can print concrete to make replacements for parts of the Great Barrier Reef that have been damaged. Normally, those reefs take thousands of years to build, but what these scientists do is they find the areas that are damaged, they make CAD replicas of those damaged areas, and they print them in concrete. So it's a base structure upon which coral can create a top layer, and that helps reinvigorate the environment and helps return normality to that area. I mean, one of the coolest things about 3D printing is that it's a community that never stops innovating. There are hundreds of innovators who are making little tweaks to these products, who are trying out different things, and so it really gives everybody an opportunity to create anything they can imagine. The, the opportunities are amazing out there. The number of technologies that are advancing at a rapid pace, nanotechnology, stem cell research, uh, genomics uh, in a field of energy, everything's changing very rapidly. One of the sites that I do recommend that you go and look at is Singularity University. There's lots of interesting articles about all these different fields and it points you to a great level of resource. But the important thing is that for us, 
to put no limits in what we think is possible. And if you can do that and enjoy the ride and enjoy this, this, this wonderful opportunity for you to explore all these possibilities, I can not tell you what you can accomplish. Of course, I'm here to talk about my experience in space. So I want to show you a video to give you at least enough to ask me some questions. The heart is a blow. My sister. Shoots up through the stony ground. There's no room. No space to rent in this town. You're out of luck. And the reason that you had to care, the traffic is stuck. My mission was the International Space Station. Uh, space Station is a collaboration between 16 countries, and uh, it's the great proof that if different countries want to work together and accomplish great things, they definitely can. And space provides that opportunity for everyone to do that. Uh, space Station orbits at 220 miles above our planet, and it uh, travels at five miles per second. It makes an orbit every 90 minutes, so you get to see a sunrise and a sunset every 90 minutes, one uh, more beautiful than the other. And um, definitely the view you have from those amazing windows up there are incredible. It gives you a new perspective on life on our planet and how important it is uh, for us to, to preserve this spaceship we have that's taking us through this universe. So with that, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to be with you today.